Good morning. For the last month or so, I realized that my YouTube channel has become the unofficial flashback appreciation channel. And I have got some other things in the work really soon. I'm gonna, I've just found some absolute gems that you'd never hear of on YouTube at all. And those that are on there, they're just very, very brief, but there are some absolute gems that I have found since mucking around with Raspberry Pis. And we're gonna start focusing more on that. But I realize at the minute it's all flashback all the time and I am kind of done. What I wanna do is just put this last video up just to show basically what I've got recently and just to let you know that I'm putting all the flashback videos in their own playlist. So it's gonna be all the playthroughs from level one to level seven on each different pool, then the three supplemental ones and then the complete walkthrough. So what I've done is I've taken all those seven um, videos, those live streams I did, cut them so it's just the level and then put them together. And then in the corner, you'll see the um, the port. So like the, the, the computer or the console that it's being played on. So you'll see it change down in the corner. And I've tried to button together as well as I can. But you can watch the whole game from the beginning to the end all the way through and I die a couple of times during my walkthrough. Anyway, that's basically um, the point of this video. But also, I wanna show you what I bought. Now, I, I, I'm a confessed flashback super fan, right? I love the game and I found it kind of at random. It was in 92, 93, where I had seen in like a magazine or two magazines this game called flashback and i'll i played another world but i wasn't very good at it and i managed to convince my dad that we needed this game it wasn't very hard to convince him but um we went down to stratford shopping center and in stratford shopping center where i don't know what's there now i think where sainsbury's is now there's a there used to be a w smith's and uh, the w smith's was the only place in I think East London, really, where you could buy big box PC games because it was the closest, or at least in that area of East London, because it was the closest WH Miss big enough to stock all that stuff. Anyway, picked up a copy of Flashback. The box was phenomenal. The box is still some of the best box art you'll ever see. It's oh, just beautiful. Um, so sort of impressionistic, you never really get what the box art is about until you get to like level two and even then you're like oh right okay uh so i've still got the box and i've still got the four original diskettes but the one thing i lost a long time ago was the manual and the reason i lost the manual was because i used to read the manual and that sounds really really weird until you see it so the manual itself isn't just how to install and the controls and the warranty and that's it. It has those at the back. The whole front two thirds of the manual is this really weird in-depth world building newspaper stroke travel guide. It's properly, properly bizarre. Anyway, I have the original box. I have the original diskettes. They're a bit beat up, but it's serviceable. I have actually, I took a photo of the box a couple of years ago when the remake came out and I've repaired the box since then. I've done actually a pretty good repair job on the box. It's not mint or, you know, you could never fool anyone to think it was mint, but it's in good shape now, much better than it was then. But the manual I could never find. It's somewhere, maybe it got thrown out, maybe it's in the bottom of a landfill somewhere, maybe it's in my parents' attic. I have no clue. But it's a shame and I always regretted losing that. So this week, I bought one. Uh, I went on eBay and I paid the princely sum of 13 pounds delivered. And at the same time, I wanted to get the Genesis manual as well, because the Genesis manual has got a comic book in it. Um, in fact, I'll put up a few slides of the comic book here. There's page one, there's page two, I don't know, I'll add it in later. So the Genesis had this comic book in it. Um, but the 
UK strict European manual had this incredible law building stuff in it. And I bought it because I wanted to see it again. And uh, I'm just going to end this flashback sort of look at, walk through, compendium, whatever you want to call it, with just a little look at the manual because it is truly, truly something else. Still one of the best manuals I've ever seen. All right, cool. Let's have a look. Okay, so this here is the package that arrived. I got it from replayvideogames.co.uk. Um, I paid, what was it, about £11 for it. Let's have a look at what's inside. So this manual, I mean, this thing is thick. It comes in at 60 pages or 62 if you include these blank note pages. So 62 pages, you don't get anything like this. You never got anything like this then and you definitely don't get anything like this now because manuals are a thing of the past. It is a fantastic, fantastic piece of law building. And I'm not gonna go through all of it, I'm quickly gonna brush over it. Um, full disclosure, there are a load of grammatical errors in it and also there are a few couple of like French words that just got past the copy editor. But let's have a quick look. It is genuinely, Super duper impressive. Okay, I haven't got my glasses on, so bear with me. Scenario, the year is 2142. Conrad Hart, agent with the Galaxia Bureau of Investigation, was in great danger. Gotta keep one head of them. Uh, gotta keep one step ahead of them. If I don't, I'm hamburger. Hugging the shop fronts, Collar turned up. He made his way back to his apartment. I must try and contact Sonia. Now, Sonia doesn't appear in the game at all. Um, she appears in, I think she appears in the um, Genesis comic book that was included with the Genesis uh, version, well, the American Mega Drive version of the game. Uh, she's mentioned in this, but that's it. So this is obviously from like um, Paul Cassette's original script. And she just got cut for whatever reason. Wherever she is, and get to the headquarters. It's the only safe place. Uh, while field testing his latest piece of equipment, the molecular, the molecular density analyzer, which is the glasses from They Live, Conrad and his girlfriend Sonia made a startling discovery. Certain individuals have molecular density so high, the only conclusion could be that they weren't human. Since then, Sonia had mysteriously disappeared. I mean, not mysteriously, she was just cut from the game. Leaving him as the only one that could warn the authorities. They better believe me. Still, if they don't, the visual record of my discovery can be extracted from my cloned memory patterns within this holocube I'm carrying. They've got to believe that. Reaching, the apart reaching his apartment block, movement from the top of the building opposite caught his eye. Now, this is in the game. This is the, um, the when you get your memories back, that whole flash the flashback scene. Um, this is actually animated in it. So obviously they just cut these last, you know, five or six lines. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. Uh, a pole, uh, yeah, movement from the building opposite caught his eye. As he turned around to get a better look, a pulse of laser light caught him square in the center of his back, sending him sprawling across the sidewalk. Again, that is actually animated. Almost immediately, the silence was broken by a whining roar. A sleek shuttle hovered overhead. Its landing thrusters blew clouds of water vapor and trash into the air uh, all around as it sat down beside him. Two dark-suited figures got out and with their eyes scanning the surrounding buildings, quickly approached an unconscious, unconscious comrade. Get him to the shuttle fast, rasped one of the captors. I'll contact Central Command. He brought a walkie-talkie up to his mouth. Number seven here, subject acquired. We're bringing him in. So again, all of that's animated. This does go on for a while. Uh, basically, what is all written down here is the intro sequence now. So comrade wakes up. And he hears a voice and it's like, oh, no, there is an interesting, there is an interesting bit here. Yeah, this is it. Uh, I don't see why we just, uh, I don't see why we bother with all that memory erasure business came a voice. Why don't they just have us kill him and be done with it? After a short pause, another voice responded, insurance. We'll place one of our agents in his job with orders to gather as much information as possible. If for any reason the op operative is threatened with discovery, we can extract him and send this one back minus his memory. Everyone will think he's gone gaga, leaving us undiscovered. So that's really cool. What they were going to do was clone or like their morphs, right? So they're going to impersonate Comrade. Wipe this, com wipe 
comrade's memory, impersonate him, and if they ever get found out, throw in the real comrade, and everyone will think he's gone mad. That's really cool. Anyway, the rest of it is just describing the opening cutscene with the two guys running down, blasting open the door, uh, then he grabs the hover bike and escapes on the stolen hover bike, and then it literally is word for word a description of uh, him going over the top of Titan and then being, you know, shot down, landing in the jungle and waking up unconscious. Uh, it starts with, or it ends with, he could clearly see a box about 10 meters below, a bright red light on the side of it, blinking steadily. I might as well go and fetch it, Comrade thought. I suppose it could, take, could contain something useful. Then it breaks the fourth wall and speaks directly to you. He thought he was safe now. However, we know different, and it's up to you to make uh, to make sure Comrade gets to know too. Which I thought was really weird, why they would write all of that and then break the fourth wall and speak directly to you. Anyway, here's where it gets interesting. This is the new space. So this is a special edition number 45 from 15th of April, 2142. And the contents really do break down what's going on inside. From here on out, it's a newspaper. It's really weird. So you've got the background. So it basically tells you that, um, you know, Earth is basically done for. And we discovered planets that we can find habitable. One of those planets was the moon of Saturn called Titan. Um, unfortunately, there's no breathable oxygen there, so they built an artificial jungle. And the artificial jungle creates oxygen, which then gets brought down in pipes to New Washington, which explains the opening level is the jungle, and the second level's got all that pipe work and duct worked in. That's to bring oxygen down into the thing. Again, none of this is explained in the game. It's all in the manual, and only in the uh, European manual, as far as I'm aware. So look, here's the upper level artificial jungle. This is actually where you meet your first mutant. He's here. This door doesn't exist, but this is that. This is obviously concept art and um, they've used it instead of just doing it as concept art. They've actually used it as an, a newspaper clipping. It's really clever. And then here's the air ducts in the street and it basically um, tells you how they get the oxygen down. And that's why you've got these big rotating blades in New Washington, like the very first scene of level two, you've got these big rotating blades, that's to pump air into the thing. It's so clever, like why, why does this, none of this in the game? Um, these, just out of interest, this is copy protection. When you see this, it shows you a symbol, you find this, the symbol that matches, and then you find the five or six letters behind it, and then you just tap in the next six, that's all. All right. And then we've had an advert for the Utopia bar, Cheers, a word frequently, oh, by the way, all of this is very Starship Troopers, like the novel. It's very sort of black in its, I want, I'm not gonna say humor. It's, it's all written in uh, the sort of view of everything's terrible. And this newspaper is basically a propaganda newspaper to try and convince you that it's not too terrible. And these two next bits sort of kind of bring that in. Utopia bar, cheers, a word frequently on the lips of thirsty clients frequenting the Utopia bar. What could be more natural after all? We have come to one of Earth's best ambassadors here on Titan. Wine and beer brought over in special ships, throw freely. Conversation becomes quite lively, but always good natured. Open 24 hours a day, you'll find a warm welcome uh, to make you forget the worries of city life. And then uh, the Oscar Wilson Avenue, uh, underground America, and then a phone number. Oscar Wilson, I believe, was a painter, but I could be wrong. And this kind of, this is another piece in the newspaper, which is basically, um, uh, again, it's sort of like that sort of, not black humour, but sort of like black stark reality with this propaganda newspaper. It is quite funny in sort of the more you think about it. So this guy has basically won a trip to Titan to become a miner, right so it's almost like he's sort of super happy to go and uh yeah it's like he entered a, a, a bit like the island he entered a prize draw and now he gets to basically be a miner um harvesting sap from the artificial jungle and here's the train the shuttle train it says uh where is it 
Yeah, as well as the possibilities of work on offer by the Interstellar Mining Company. Uh, first of all, on your arrival, you'll be taken to the luxurious Hotel Planetarium, close to the Museum of Ancient Art, with spacious rooms, a business center, superb outdoor swimming pool and gym. This hotel puts a free shuttle service at the disposal of its clientele, allowing you to visit all the districts of New Washington. Um, what's this? this? Oh, this is the opening of the spaceport. So the uh, Monsieur Antoine Lubesch, uh, you know, he's... Happy about the spaceport being finally open. Physicist honored. I think, although I'm not sure, I think this is the VIP that you escort in mission two. I think, because the way this blurb sort of describes it, he's down, you know, doing research on Titan. And I believe that's the guy that, you, I could be wrong, but I believe that might be the guy that you um, escort. Uh, and then they're talking about riots in New Washington and how the police, these are the guys with the jetpacks um, that you do like shoot, shield, shoot, shield. This is what they actually look like. Again, a really good way of using this concept art. Use it as a newspaper, why not? Um, then there's a mining disaster. They were just telling you, you know, about how many victims there were. Uh, and then there's an advert for the bike that you steal. And uh, I like the, the, it's got all of these things as well, like the capacity, the height, the weight, the price, like 50,000 credits or 51,000, give or take. Then this is really weird. Um, in the beginning, this phenomenon wired hardly anyone, but the evidence is there. Recruitment to higher risk jobs has fallen markedly over the first few months. Well, yeah, because there was, you know, like a mining disaster back here. Um, with, a with a view to revitalizing the job market, recruitment personnel are now offering candidates absolutely unbeatable, salar unbeatable salaries. If you like dicing with death, are in good shape physically, and money is your driving force, there's a job for you. <laughs> they have a high risk jobs unit. And basically, look, dome scraping. Because again, again, it's all about, again, this is more concept art. Um, and then just some weird graph they put next to it to make it look like a newspaper. This is the sap that's actually on the branches in level one, and they collect this sap. And the mutants have been mutated by this because they've been abusing it like some kind of drug. And then they've become mutated from taking this drug. Oh no, there's been a an incident, a minor dispute, a minor dispute. A minor dispute occurred in the Utopia yesterday around about 11 p.m. Titan time. Two miners attacked a barman who refused to serve them as they were already drunk. Security service in the famous establishment had no difficulty in restraining the two hotheads, ejecting one and warning the other. Everything returned to normal after this, and the evening ended happily. Okay, they found a, a school trip. Here it is, look. During a school visit to the new artificial jungle, these two uh, new specimens were found. So they're basically, the, they're talking about mutating species. So these two species have mutated in the same way as the mutants up on the surface have mutated because they've been abusing the drug refined from the sap. Uh, for a news, news from Earth in brief. This is quite good. Um, the the warming of the ice cap has resulted in a tidal wave of unprecedented proportions off the coast of Mexico. Many lives have been lost. Uh, blah, 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 blah. The underwater city of Ar Arabu 3 has been opened off the coast of Edinburgh. This new underwater city should soon be used to house the survivors of the Mexican disaster. Like I said, very, very, very dark. The rolling asteroids, which I'm assuming is the rolling stones, the rolling asteroids interplanetary tour is due to reach Titan towards the end of June this year. Reservations for the legendary Earth group can be made at any of the boxing box offices of Delphine Corporation, or so we hear. And then look, there's an advert for the pistol. And I was right, it does shoot platinum fibers. Uh, the Titax, this is an advert for the, the Titax Holocene. Or Holocene. Um, I quite like this as well. During our during the 22nd 2D Science Fiction Festival, presided over this year by Jürgen Lucas, we will again have an opportunity to see four now immortal works of art on the Titax screens. Star Wars, Blade Runner, Star Trek, and finally the unforgettable Alien films. All oh, films that they've ripped off for this game. Yep. This is why I used to use this 
um, manual. This is probably why the manual got lost, because I used to use this map, because it's when you look at the map in the Amiga version, running on a stock Amiga 500, it takes forever. So I just use this map to get around. Holoscopes, today's sign, Sagittorpio. With your enhanced national charisma, free of regrets, you expect a lot of the present, oh, you expect a lot of the present and the future. People under your sign do not cling to the past with good reason. Calm your impatience, save energy. You'll surprise those around you with your speed in safeguarding your interests or those of your loved ones. Your quest for perfection often makes you intransigent. On the other hand, your directness, so pleasing and sexy in love matters, will help break down the barriers and give your passions free reign. So yeah, there's the uh, love tips out there for you Sagittorpios. And now we just get into the user manual. This is basically the same for every version of the game. So you have the Commodore Amiga and the PC version share this. This is how I knew about the cinematic zoom because it's in the manual up here. It's nowhere in the game, it just, it's just here in the manual. Um, and that's also how I knew about the shortcuts to turn off the cinematic sequences. See, when it's running from floppy disk, then the default is off. This is where it gets a bit weird. Teleporter, okay, maybe. Energy generator, sure, switch, yep. Camera, if you say so. Pressure pad, maybe. Card lock, all right, key lock. I don't know what that is, that's just some pixels. Save, okay, sure. And the hazards, landmine, sure. Falling mine, looks like a cross. Laser cannon, all right, maybe. Disintegrator, that's just a black square with a white pixel in the middle. That sh doesn't show me anything. And the electrified ground is just, there's no, I don't even know what that is. I think they might have just taken a picture of the ground, but it wasn't on on that frame. Anyway. I'll leave it there because this is the thing that's basically they've been they've re-edited for every manual in the game. The one thing that did surprise me when I ordered this the other day though is yeah, here it is. Yes. I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm going to have to test it out. Works only with the teleport receiver. So basically, you can throw the receiver, which we know, but if you want to pick up the receiver without going to it and picking it up or teleporting to it, you can press down, you can put down the teleport remote control and it should bring the teleport receiver to you. So I thought that was a glitch. I actually put up a YouTube video where I thought it was a glitch, but apparently that's a mechanic. I'm going to have to test that. In fact, you know what? I am going to test that and I'll just cut it in here. Okie doke, in the uh, interest of discovery, let's find out. I've got the Mega Drive version running here. I'm gonna select the tele-receiver, give that a lob. Okay, that's over there now. I'm gonna select the tele-control. Where is it? Tele-control, I'm gonna press duck and use. <gasps> oh, what? I can bring the receiver back to me. And it picks both of them up at the same Why have I never known this? God damn it, I should have ordered that manual earlier. So yeah, um, like I say, I'm, I'm done with flashback now. I'm gonna put everything uh, into one playlist that you can play through. And I'll tell you what, in the link of the description of this video, I'm gonna put a PDF to the flashback manual. If you're into flashback, or you just wanna read some like really weird French sci-fi. It's, yeah, on concept design, it's really good. Like I say, you've got 50 pages. If I can't find a PDF to link to, um, what I'll do is I'll just make a PDF out of this and then I'll link that down there as well. Either way, you're gonna have a link down there for this if you just wanna read weird 90s French sci-fi. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it. Pretty much done with flashback now. At some point, I am gonna play Fade to Black. I'll just do a quick look of Fade to Black, but that won't be until later down in the future. It's all right, it's not brilliant, but it's nowhere near as good as flashback. And then I might also look at another world at some point. All right then, so um, yeah, that's it. Flashback, flashback manual. Really, really cool. Definitely give it a look. All right, cool. Peace.